The last thing that we need to take care of for your test is the ratio analysis. This is analyzing a company using various commonly accepted metrics of performance, such as your ability to pay off your current debt, your ability to collect on receivables, and how much of your profit is going to be going to each individual share. So let's start with the first one, which is cash ratio just like we did before we're going to benchmark here this time not against a company but against the industry average so cash ratio is going to tell us how much of Bradley copper wirings current liabilities we can pay off in cash and cash alone to figure this out we're going to divide cash by current liability so if we hit equal we go back to our balance sheet which we did with the vertical analysis find our amount of cash and divide it by our current liabilities which can be found down here we find that Bradley has a cash ratio of 0.86 when rounded to two decimals which is the common amount of decimals for ratios it means they can pay off 86 percent of their current liabilities in cash alone this is below the industry average of 1.15 so Bradley might be a little cash like their cash ratio is lagging behind that of other people in the wiring business Next, we have the acid test ratio, and the acid test ratio is how much of our current liabilities Bradley can pay off with only their liquid assets, things that they can readily turn into money very, very fast. We're going to go and look at how many different accounts are going to count as highly liquid, but I'm sure there's going to be more than one, so let's start with equals and then opening a parenthesis before we go to our vertical analysis. So here up at the top let's look at our current assets that we have in that area our current assets are going to be cash accounts receivable inventory prepaid expenses and other current assets well cash is obviously highly liquid it's cash accounts receivable also highly liquid because you can sell them to companies called factors that will buy your receivables from you at a discount but they're very easy to sell Inventory, not so much. You can't just go and sell all of your inventory in a day, even though most companies wish that they could. It's just not possible. And if you want to sell to another retailer that sells the same thing that you do, in case Bradley wanted to sell to another wiring company, maybe they don't want to have that inventory on hand because they had so much. So inventory is not typically liquid. Prepaid expenses are really not liquid. If you have prepaid your landlord for rent, how are you going to sell that to somebody else? It's your rent. The only hope really is to get a refund from your landlord. And other current assets typically aren't included because there's no specification of what they are. So for us, we're only going to have two different types of accounts, and they're going to be cash, and they are going to be our accounts receivable. Net. We're going to divide the sum of those two by our current liabilities of 28000 and we're going to determine that Bradley Copper Wiring has an acid test ratio, or a quick ratio, of 2.36. They can pay off all their current liabilities 2.36 times with their, just their highly liquid investments this is well above industry average so we're feeling pretty good about ourselves there current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities so if we hit equal we go back to our balance sheet we take the amount of our current assets which is going to be 135,000 and we divide that by the amount of current liabilities that we have which is this 28,000 down here for 2018 we don't 4.82 we can pay off our current liabilities 4.82 times by liquidating our current assets and this is more than double the industry average so we're feeling really really confident about our ability to meet our obligations for our current liabilities even if our cash ratio is a little low because we're cash late our other assets more than offset that difference for gross profit percentage you're going to take gross profit and divide it by net sales so let's hit equal for this, we need the income statement because that's where sales and profit go. So if we go to our income statement over here, we take our sales, our gross profit for the period, which is this 46000 and we divide it by our sales for the period, which was this 84000 And we see that Bradley Copper Wiring turned roughly 55% of their sales into gross profit. This is slightly above industry average, so we're feeling pretty good here. Next up, we have accounts receivable turnover ratio, and this isn't the easiest thing to get about. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take your net sales and you're going to divide them by your average accounts receivable. So let's start with an equal sign. We need to get our net sales. So we're going to go to 
our income statement we're going to find our net sales of 84,000 and we need to, we know we need to divide them by our average accounts receivable so you should here start a parenthesis for me and then we'll go to the balance sheet and we have our accounts receivable we need to find the average of our last two periods so the first one is going to be this year at 42,000 plus what we had in the prior year at 24,500 and we're going to want to divide all of that by 2 let's go back here and throw in a double parenthesis there we go now when we hit enter we're going to come up with 2.53 that means that Bradley is collecting their average amount of receivables that are outstanding at any one time 2.53 times during the year this is so far below the industry average it's kind of sad we're having issues collecting our receivables for sure how bad are we having issues collecting our receivables well it's easy enough if we hit equals type in 365 and divide it by that accounts receivable turnover ratio that we just had we see that it's taking Bradley about 144.48 days to collect on any one given receivable. This is almost triple the industry average. We're having a massive, massive problem collecting on our receivables, and we need to find some way to fix this. Maybe by offering better, you know, sales discounts uh, for prompt payment is one option, or even looking at who we're selling to. There might be some people in there that are just taking way too long to collect from and it's not worth the time. If we have a limited amount of supply, we should look for other people to buy our products. Debt to equity is next and it is total liabilities divided by total equity. We can find both those on the balance sheet. So let's go back to our vertical analysis of the balance sheet and find our total liabilities for this period was 90,000. We're going to divide that by our 2018 total equity, which we can find right here as 146,500. Comes out to be 0.61. We are financing less with liabilities than we are with equity. Uh, it makes us much less risky and it's way below the industry average of 1.1 so we're feeling pretty good here if we did in fact need to re raise cash because we're a little cash light maybe we want to consider issuing more shares our debt to equity ratio can definitely take it would still be considered less risky uh, and it makes more sense to raise cash that way into taking on further debt so next we can move to our earnings per share and earnings per share is going to be equal to our net income minus our preferred dividends divided by our weighted average shares outstanding this company uh, Bradley if we go to our horizontal analysis here we can grab our net income they don't offer preferred stock we don't have any preferred stock on our balance sheet so we don't need to worry about subtracting out any preferred dividends because we don't have preferred dividends to pay if we go back to our ratios over here we get to see that our amount that we need to divide by is equal to our number of weighted average shares outstanding which is going to be 9,000 so our formula should be equals the cell that we picked net income from divided by 9,000 I'm sorry I had to backtrack there just because I was flipping around to show you when we divide we get 2.55 our investors are getting about two dollars and 55 cents of earnings for each share that is outstanding this is above the industry average of 2.25 so we're feeling pretty good here next up we have our price earnings ratio and how you divide this is you take market price and you divide it by EPS so this will be easy the information tells us that we have a market price of 16 and we can divide that by our earnings per share of 255 and we come up with six dollars and 27 cents it costs our potential investors, people that want to buy into our company, about $6.27 to get $1 of our earnings. This is below the industry average of 7.5. Whether this is good or bad is kind of hard to specify. See, we look like a better you know, investment to people looking to invest their own personal money because they have to pay less to get a dollar of our earnings. However, from the corporate perspective, you want this number to be incredibly high because that means people really want to buy into your company and they're willing to pay a premium on your earnings to get into the company. 
So being below industry average is not great here for Bradley Copper wiring, but if we do choose to issue common stock to you know fix the fact that we're cash light, our price earnings ratio is going to make it attractive to potential buyers because they don't have to pay a whole lot of money to get at our earnings. And with that, we are through our ratio analysis. Uh, we have all the points to talk about. You're going to have to do the same thing. Find some talking points of your own. Uh, don't be, you know, too worried about having the perfect answer. As long as what you're going across makes sense, um, I will be fine with it. So good luck on your test, anybody, and let me know if you need my help. Contact me. Have a good one.